Powered by Red Media in partnership with TSN. This is Season 5, Episode 39 of the Ray and Dregs Hockey Podcast, presented by our title sponsor, Canadian Club Whiskey. We've introduced the first release of the Canadian Club Invitation Series, CC 15-year-old Sherry Cask, delicious signature CC Classic 12-year-old whiskey, finished with a secondary aging ray in the Oloroso Sherry Casks. And it's delicious. It is. The didn't stand I, a chance no through the chance. holiday season. Let's just be clear and honest here. But we shared, right? Like we shared. We, we, we made sure that our, uh, well, in your case, your sons, in my case, my son, had a taste of the beautiful 15 year old cherry cast. So everything's good. We're all set. Yep. You bet. It was fabulous. You know, you need, you, you, you need a bottle in Bristol, Connecticut, because I'm looking at you. There you are mm-hmm. in ESPN studios. Tonight, uh, this is Thursday morning as we record Rain Drags, right. um, and I'm, I'm I'm looking at you for anybody who's following on our YouTube channel, and I'm looking out the window of your room, and I'm like, mm, that does have a bit of a Connecticut feel to it, especially in good old Bristol. There are parts of Connecticut that are beautiful. I'm not disparaging <laughs> the, the state of Connecticut. It's just that has a very yeah. Bristol feel to it. A lot of low buildings, a lot of, a lot of countryside around the building. And if you, you can't look behind the camera, but on the other side is the Otis elevator testing site. Ah. So there's this shaft for the elevators that go, it's, it's right. You're like, Oh yeah, that thing's been there since I've been coming here in the nineties. <laughs> That's where they test the elevators. Probably a good idea because if you didn't test the elevators and you just right. put them in full operation, mm, yeah, It'd be a problem. How do you how do you think they know it. that there's twelve people allowed? Or, um, <laughs> I don't know. I just think they stick a number in there. Okay, so as you say that, we've all been in elevators that have been jammed beyond capacity, right? Yeah. And and I'm sure you have. And you'd be that guy in the back, in the middle, that says, and inevitably, okay, it stops on the 11th floor, right? The doors open and, well, there's a large human standing there waiting yeah. to get onto the elevator. And they're like, oh, you, you squeeze together. We have room for one more. You're the guy in the middle or the back that says, this isn't going to work. No room. <laughs> no, but it's it's not that. It's not. It's, there's always like, first of all, I sweat in close proximity. So I'm in a full lather if four people get in the elevator. Yes. And then yeah. we've all been on that milk run mm-hmm. that goes down. And you know, the people that are trying to jam in, they've oh, been yeah. waiting too. They're Correct. like, they're like, I can see there's no room to hell with it. I'm getting in anyway. (laughs) It's like when the first person comes out of there, it's like a clown car. And there's like a hundred people get out of the elevator. I'm in a full sweat. Oh, I I used to hate it most when I was playing because you'd be in a suit. And right by the time you get to the bottom, you're like, you're leaking. And I'm like, oh, yeah, no, and that. I, I don't. I don't like the closed space, man. I don't. I don't like that. Well, speaking of playing and speaking of clown cars, we've got a good friend of the podcast and a real good buddy of yours joining us in a bit, Dean Evison, um, formerly of the Minnesota Wild. But man, we recorded the the, the interview with Dino uh, a bit earlier. Um, but his outlook on life is refreshing. Mm. It is for me anyway, right? I mean, you go through a tough situation in November, yet he's got a smile on his face. You know, he's he's living his best life. He's visiting his children, his grandchildren. You know, he's planning trips with his wife, who's a flight attendant, all of these things. And on top of all that, can't wait to get back on an NHL bench. We could all be so yep. positive. Yeah, Dino's got a uh, he's got a real energetic view of things, always has. There's always been a blue-collar, get-your-hands-dirty worker. Um, he is, um, yeah, he's a terrific guy. I, 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 I've had, uh, you know, we lived together. We had drove lousy cars and cooked craft (laughs) dinner in the NHL because that's the food we had. And, um, it was, um, it was really cool to see him coach. And, um, I, 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 I feel like he's going to get another job. He's really good at it. And, um, but like he said, there's no guarantee. There's lots of good people that are 
biting and clawing and scratching for another crack mm-hmm. at it. And uh, so right now he's playing some golf, doing some travel, and um, I think you'll find a, an entertaining, entertaining lesson. Agreed. Uh, Dean Evison coming up on the Rain Dregs podcast. Let's check out our headlines brought to you by Tim Hortons, celebrating 60 years of keeping it fresh with the return of the four iconic retro donuts, the Dutchie, the Blueberry Fritter, the Cinnamon Sugar Twist, and Walnut Crunch. They're all available right now, but a reminder, for a limited time only and only at Tim's. Um, Man, we always, I don't like starting headlines with a negative, but negatives come in many different forms. Unfortunately, it, you know, if I look back to Wednesday night, it's, it's one of the incidents of the night that we're drawn to because of how graphic it was. And, it, you know, it's in the Rangers and the Lightning game last night. Mm-hmm. Ray Mikhail Sergachev yeah. falls victim to the reverse hit. So he's stretchered off the ice with what looked like a knee injury. Um, the good news is he gave a thumbs up as he left the ice. That's just an acknowledgement to the crowd. But brutal, brutal given the 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 injury history of Sergachev. Both teams were clearly rattled. Right. So I want you to talk about the loss um, to the Tampa Bay Lightning. But first, we've we've shared our concerns on this pod in the past, haven't we, about the reverse hit. And I'm not Hey, Lafreniere was was trying to protect the puck, maybe himself a little bit mm-hmm. close proximity to the boards. But that hit is it's it historically is, has been a tough one, hasn't it? Well, I, I I see a clear difference between protecting the puck when you're allowed to stand your ground and you're allowed to lean back into the player as opposed to hitting the player. And that that to me is the part of the reverse hit that in in my mind is interference every time. Yeah. It's it's a penalty every time. Now, there is zero chance Alexi Lafreniere intended anything other than trying to clear some space for himself. Yeah. Like I, I'm sure you saw the, you know, as the camera went in on him, I mean, he was totally rattled, oh, shaking. For sure. And, and a, it's a, it, it must be a brutal feeling to, to be the player where someone else gets hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember uh, Tory Robertson broke his leg in a fight and, he had a, what was called a spiral fracture down his leg. And when we went to help him up, cause he couldn't get up, like his foot was pointed the wrong way. <sighs> and the whole, like the life of the building of the game of everything would just evaporated, which is what happened last night yeah. in New York, uh, Wednesday night in New York. And, uh, it's a brutal injury. I, I mean, I'm certainly no doctor, but that doesn't look like, no, we're going to see Sergachev anytime soon, and that's that's it's a terrible injury. It's um, it puts an already undermanned, thin Tampa defense in yeah. in a huge hole. I mean, yeah. I, I the only way they could paper over this is if they moved him to LTI and yeah. use that cap space. I mean, that yeah. but they might decide, you know what, now's not the year to do it. I I don't. I don't know, but it's a it's a brutal, brutal injury. Yeah, and and look, it it, it feels a little bit uh, opportunistic, <laughs> you know, for me to even suggest uh, suggest this. But I knew this prior to last night's injury, so I'll say it. I know that Tampa Bay is one of the teams that is interested in Sean Walker of the Philadelphia Flyers, mm-hmm. and I'm sure they've had conversations with Calgary on on Chris Tanev and Julian Brisebois is among the better NHL general managers around the trade deadline and doing what he can do to better the options for his team. So, you know, we'll, we'll keep an eye on, on how things progress. All the best to Sergachev and undoubtedly again, uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning will find a way to, to, to bring in some reinforcements. Um, speaking of defense, Winnipeg Jets defenseman Brendan Dillon suspended three games for his hit on Nola Chari. Yeah. It's never easy to predict what George Peros is going to do in the Department of Player Safety. Mm-hmm. I felt like this was a three to four game suspension. And that's mm-hmm. just, just based off Brendan Gallagher getting five for what I thought was a nastier hit. 
Um, you know, the circumstance was different with Dylan on Achari. Achari is going full speed. Looks like he's kind of off balance a little bit, leans. And while mm-hmm. Dylan is tucked in, doesn't raise his shoulder or his elbow. What is undeniable are the optics. You can see the forearm, the shoulder, all of it hit Achari in the head, and then the helmet pops off. Like, right. Unintentional, but a suspendable play, right? Yeah. It, 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 see, there's the thing. Every, a lot of fans believe that if there is no intent, there can't be a suspension. I don't think for a second Brendan Dillon tried to hit Achari in the head. Not for a second. Yeah. If you look at the play, and and I've, you know, I I mentioned yesterday on Twitter that size difference doesn't make a doesn't make a case because in the Vancouver game game that same day in Carolina, mm-hmm. Connor Garland got smoked. I thought it, I think it's Brady Shea. It might have been Jacob Slavin. I'm pretty sure it's Shea, but you know I, I might have it wrong. And he got smoked. The size difference between either one of those guys and Connor De- Garland is massive, yeah. far bigger than it would be between Achari and Dylan. So you can hit without hitting the head. Yeah. Dylan's hit is, as it turns out, is mistimed and he misses the body. And so that's a suspendable play. Brendan Gallagher's hit had nothing to do with the play. Dylan's is part of the play and it still went wrong. If you look at Achari, he's coming up on his left. I think it's Pionk in front of him. He's going around Pionk. He kind of loses the puck. He looks down, he looks up. And at contact, Mm. Achari's eyes are straight ahead. He sees Dylan. Sometimes there is nowhere to go. And you know you are screwed the moment before contact. Like there's nowhere to go. And the the suspension was was warranted, um, in in my opinion. Mm. Edmonton Oilers Ray lose to the Vegas Golden Knights. Aiden Hill makes thirty saves in that win for mm. Vegas, so it snaps the Oilers' sixteen game winning streak, one shy of tying <laughs> the Pittsburgh Penguins' record. Um, yeah, it's too bad from a spectacle perspective. From you know yeah. a, across the NHL, they didn't at least equal the record, but I can't imagine that there's any sort of serious lag or letdown inside that Oilers room is there no I there's no hangover to that it might it might be different if they came out of the break and just laid an egg um yeah yeah. that you know now they you go to the next game and maybe you don't play so well and now all of a sudden you've lost two in a row they played well it was a good Mm -hmm. game it was a really good game um but it just I think there's an illustration there about so you win 16 in a row, you lose to Vegas that doesn't have Shea Theodore, doesn't have Jack Eichel. Um, and what that tells you is, damn, that conference is going to be really hard to get out of. That division is going to be really hard yes. to get out of. It's I, That to me, more than anything, is what I took away from that game. Mm. Is I thought Edmonton played well. I thought Hill was terrific. I thought Vegas played really well, given the pieces they're missing. Mm-hmm. And Vegas happened to win that night, but man, it's going to be murder to get through that division. It's, yeah. And then, and then if you get through it, then you've got Colorado or Dallas on the other side, and yeah. or you know, in the other division, it's it's going to be a hard road out of the West again. Well, twice a week on Insider Trading on TSN, we talk about the trade speculation. We've already dabbled here a little bit in light of the Sergachev injury. What Julian Breesmaal might do. Um, Sticking in Edmonton, I know that there are internal discussions as the deadline fast approaches here. Do you add a defenseman? Do you add another forward? If you're looking at defense, I know internally they've talked about Sean Walker. I know they've talked about Chris Tanev. I don't know how you make those pieces fit or work. I mean, obviously, Cody Ceci would have to get moved in any type of that scenario. Um, But then up front, you know, names like Tarasenko, is Jake Gensel even remotely possible? Put your GM hat on if you're Kenny Holland mm-hmm. and start with, you don't have to identify any one of those pieces because they'd all help Edmonton. They'd help a lot of teams. But what do you think Edmonton needs more, Rick? Do they need an upgrade or, or a deeper blue line? Or do you see a, a, a more significant need up front? I, I see a forward um, for a couple of reasons. I 
it would be nice to get a little bit more depth um, offensively, like somebody you could rely upon to score. I mean, they thought it was going to be Connor Brown. I didn't, he doesn't have a goal this, this year. Right. So like it, an upgrade in that, in that position or in that regard, I think is, um, uh, is something to, is something to think about. I, yeah. I also think another, another forward gives you versatility that Edmonton really doesn't have with their forwards right now mm-hmm. that they would like to have their, their defense is fine. Their um, can you always upgrade? Sure. But I mean, I don't know how many times have they given up over two goals in the last two months? Right. Not very much. And I just see if you, you've got, you've got restraints, you've got cap, restraints and that's going to always play into it. I just, I think if I'm prioritizing at Edmonton, it would be a forward. Right. Right. And internal discussions of course happen with 32 teams. I mean, you, sure. You, you talk about the available defense, you talk about the potential of the available forwards and maybe to some degree it does come down to the draft. Now, hold on. Like, again, Tampa Bay is going to address their blue line probably through injury need. Um, if, something were to happen in Edmonton or any other club that makes you shift your target. Well, that's just what you do because of your situation. So we'll see moving forward. I, I don't know how much of the Toronto Maple Leafs Dallas Stars game you were able to watch. Just on, uh, just a little Wednesday bit. Night. Just a little bit. Yeah. So Toronto wins the game. Um, John Tavares is playing much better last couple of games coming out of the all Do you think, uh, I was just going to say that Yeah, he looked like worn out yeah slow like yeah. Uh, you know half a stride away all the time and now he looks like he did early in the year yeah. and maybe maybe the break was super helpful which always gets me thinking as players get older and everybody gets older at a different age mm-hmm. but as you get older that maybe teams would be better off you know resting a player now and then load management like, right yeah. Like it it just it just makes sense with travel and the when games pile up if you've got four games in six nights why not yeah. give one game off. Mm. And maybe you get some longer term benefit out of it. Um because Tavares looks like he's really benefited from the break anyway. He he's such a creature of habit too, right? Like I think I read somewhere he took his gear on his short holiday with his family so that he could continue yep. to train. I mean, I guess that's what keeps you well, among the best. Crosby right? went to Montana and he was skating. <laughs> right? He yeah, took, but much took, maligned, took, by the way, which was absurd, right? <laughs> he, he missed a half a day or a day at the All-Star. Uh, yeah, boy. Uh, he's, he's, probably, he's probably done enough for the game. Yeah. Uh, back to the Leafs, though. Um, their defense was in shambles. Maybe, you know, Dallas should win that game. They played back-to-back. Um, the stars of the Maple Leafs did show up. The big boys offensively showed up with Matthews and Nylander and Marner, and we already talked about John Tavares. But more and more, it becomes evident that Brad Trelevang is going to have to do something to that blue line, Ray, uh, and in short order. Otherwise, or if he doesn't, it's is it not just a recognition that he doesn't see that this group has it in terms of being a top contender. Okay, so this is why I would say to be a little bit more cautious and maybe lean towards your second point than first is it's not just the blue line to be concerned about. It's not just if you add one guy. It's it's multiple players. Um, how much of your future can you afford to part with when – they have parted with a lot of the future over the last couple of years. Um, I'm looking up front, you know, so we, we, we know the defense needs to be improved. I'm looking up front. Uh, Max Domi's got one goal in 19 games. Bertuzzi's got one goal in 29. Nyes doesn't have any in 17. Mm-hmm. Um, I think your Gregor's at zero in 20 and, um, Camp is zero and at least 20. You know, like, how are you going to fix all of this stuff? Yeah, yeah. You know, and so to me, there's there's a time when you're you're throwing good money after bad. Yeah, and and you 
this might be a time where you go, you know what? We got a, we got a pretty good team. We're going to win some games because our top end is so great. Um, but do we have enough? Like, do you trust the goalies? Is Joe Wall going to come back and be your answer for you? Is, yeah. can you add one defenseman and make the defense better? Can you add a four, you know, like after a while, you might need to just take your breath here. Yeah, you know, I, I think I'd be a terrible general manager because I'd be looking at these future assets. I'd be looking at that first round pick and going, I'm not going to be here anyway. If this doesn't pan out in the next, this season and next season, I, as general manager of the Maple Leafs, I'm probably not going to be around to worry about whether So you're or not saying this... he's got a, he's got a one year road for living does? Ah, two. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying two this year and next year. <laughs> Only because that's a, then, short, that's a pretty short road. <laughs> ah, I mean, it's grossly unfair. I get that, but I, you know, you just look at the contracts they're going to have to wrestle with with Tavares and Mitch Marner. Uh, he's just already he, he's come through Matthews and Elander, and he's got a lot more coming in the near future. So anyway, we'll, we'll hope for the best. But I'd be ah uh, okay, Chris Tanev, yeah, Calgary here, take my first. Let's get at it. Let's go. <laughs> It's good thing yeah. I'm not managing the Leafs. That's a that's a cupboard bear pretty <laughs> soon, man. It's pretty bare. Compliments of Kyle Dubas anyway. All right. Thank you to Tim Hortons for our Tim Hortons headlines. Your favorite retro donuts are back from the past. And with our 20-minute fresh coffee, what's classic is always fresh. So good. It's time for retro donuts. It's time for Tim's. It's time for our interviews on Ray and Driggs brought to us by Canadian Club Whiskey, who have released the Canadian Club Invitation Series, the CC 15-year-old Cherry Cask, all the hallmarks of classic Canadian Club with the added richness and sweetness of Sherry. All right, Ray, time to welcome back Dean Evison to the Ray and Driggs Hockey Podcast. And I'm pretty sure Dino was, what, year one? Was that year one with some of the, the, the vintage car stories and all the stuff yes. <laughs> that you two can relate to back in the playing days way back when? So Dean Evison joining us one more time. Uh, how are things going, Dean? Are you living a good life at this stage? Well, it's nice. Would I like to be working? <laughs> uh, would I like to be coaching? Yeah, but is it uh, nice to travel around and see my, my children and um, had a little Phoenix uh, trip and a little Hawaii trip with my wife? So. I'm not complaining, but uh, but I'd certainly like to be working. Yeah. What, when's the last time you had time off during a season? Oh, I, I can't remember, Ray. I honestly cannot. Um, you know, with playing and coaching, um, literally the last probably 40 years, right? Um, nothing. And, uh, you know, you'll like this. I mean, my buddies and I are talking right now about going to the Masters. Um, oh, you know, right. We never, ever had Why an opportunity not? to do it. Right. So if if we can, uh, we will, if, uh, if, if something doesn't come up. Now, how is, um, when you were let go in Minnesota, what's the first week like? Like you're, you know, we've known each other a long time. You're like, you get up, you go, you you work, you're, you know, you're a blue collar guy. And then all of a sudden you wake up and you don't have that. Like what's that first week like? Yeah, it's, it's, it's not great. And, and although, you know what, and I, I think you've maybe seen some interviews and whatever that, that mm -hmm. I've done. I, I, I didn't wallow. I didn't, I, I wasn't, you know, mad at Billy Guerin or, or the Minnesota wild organization. I, I understand we all do. We understand getting in this game, what and why it happened and all that kind of stuff. But yet, there are days that you wake up and you're like, you know, gee, I should be walking to the rink. I should be, you know, jumping on the bike right now. I should be throwing my computer in front of me. It, it's like, you know, you're, yeah, you're just like, what do I do now? Um, but, you know, my, my mom taught me a long time ago to turn negatives into positives. And I tried to do that every day. And, uh, you know, I did a bunch of interviews after and stuff, kind of stayed with it. But, uh, but yeah, no, now it's, uh, it, it's, it's tough. Some days you wake up, you want to, you want to get after it, but, uh, you know, you got to do some other things. So now doing stuff like I just mentioned, the kids and all that kind of stuff, but then yeah. uh, also getting prepared to uh, to hopefully do some interviews at some point here um, to get a new job. How do, how do you prepare? Like, how do you watch? Like, do you, do you watch close? Do you watch certain teams? Do you just kind of watch whatever's on? It's a great question because people ask that all the time. They go, "Well, are you watching this team because you know I think they're the coach is going to get fired, right?" And as an ex-coach, you, 
you don't want anyone to get fired, no. right? I mean, uh, you know, so my my children, my son is uh, is a huge uh, hockey guy. He's watching everything. Like if 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 team was to call me, I'd be able to call him and go, "What do I what do I need to know about this team?" <laughs> do I watch? Yes, I I watch and I watch the Minnesota Wild um, for probably. I don't know, a week or so, maybe four or five games after, just to see how the guys are playing. Mm-hmm. Am I, um, you know, and, and do I want them to win? No, right? I mean, that's that's uh, human <laughs> yes. nature. But but do I want? But I but I do have feelings for you know a lot of those players and and uh, you know watching them. So it's it's different watching. Mm-hmm. Do I watch every night? No, um, but I will. You know, throw games on, watch. Uh, still yeah. love the skill. Still watching systematic stuff and all that good stuff too. We know it's a cutthroat business, right? And and you're living evidence of that. Um, but you're not alone, and it's it's a growing list to this point. And you yeah. know, not every team in the league has made it to the 50 game mark, Dean, of the NHL regular season. So you've got yourself, Greg Berube, Todd McClellan, most recently, DJ Smith, Jay Woodcroft, Lane Lambert. I mean, that's six NHL head coaches this season. I mean, I don't have the historical numbers in front of me, but year by year, does it get easier, if that makes any sense, to, to dispatch head coaches just as a as a way to spark the team because you know you can't make those big trades based on salary cap and other restrictions? I, I, Dregs, I think that's a really good point that, that at, in this day and age, you can't do that, right? When, when Ray and I played, it, it was, you know, you make, you make that big trade. You make, you, you trade somebody and you, you jerk the team into, um, you know, waking up. Uh, yeah. it could, you know, do, do I believe in my situation that, that we were on, you know, in, in a position where we were coming out of it? Yeah, I did. We, we thought that, right? Because, mm-hmm. but you're trying other things, right? Like you're, you're screaming at him like Billy Guerin went into the room and he met with them. Like you're doing all these things to do ultimately what they felt they had to do with firing the coach. And I'm sure other situations are the same, but yeah, I, I, I you know, I don't think it's uh, uh, surprising that coaches are getting let go because of uh, that situation, because of the no trade type of situations, yeah. but it's still, it's still not a, a healthy situation, obviously, but uh, but we sign up for it, so you can't whine about it. Can you feel it? Like, can you feel that those last couple of weeks? Maybe, like, man, we got to get going now. Like, the urgency. I, I didn't, and I've been asked that, Ray. Um, I didn't. I and even you know until Billy actually phoned twenty minutes after I got home from the rink and said, "Could you meet me back in the office?" Th- then I knew, obviously. Yeah. Um, I mean, you just, you just know, but no, uh, to your point earlier, you just start grinding, right? You're just, that morning we got in there and we, we put a video together. We actually give the guys a day off that day. We, uh, had a ping pong tournament. Like we were doing, you know, just different things like that. Like we're stay off the ice. We'll have a ping pong tournament. We'll get the guys going. We put a video together to play fast, get out of our zone. That was our thought process for the next day. Um, when we played. Um, so no, you were just you were just grinding away. Did we know that we had lost seven in a row? Sure, um, you know, uh, but but you're just you're, you're trying to make the fix, right? You're in there and you're just working and mm-hmm. you're grinding away. So um, up until uh, uh, you know, I was walking over to uh, to his office. Uh, no, I didn't feel it at all. So you said you you've been on a couple little trips. You went to went to Hawaii with your wife. You went to play golf. Um, what like when you go can you just go poof it's all gone and you're just in in the moment or are you still spinning no oh, you still you still spin i mean as much <laughs> right. as, as as much as i say i'm a super positive guy and my wife and my mom's taught me this all that kind of it's just stuff no i mean it still eats at you right like you still you you you're walking the, through the airport and you look over and there's a hockey game on i want to be behind the bench right i mean mm-hmm. I, it's still it's still in you you're still you're still right. driven, um, you know, and, and, and this was my first shot at the NHL. I mean, obviously I've been an assistant coach for a while in Washington and then Minnesota, and this was my first opportunity. And, uh, I'm, I'm truly looking forward to the next one. Like everybody's like, Oh, you'll get another job. You're gonna, you don't know you'll get another job, but, uh, mm-hmm. I will get another job in hockey. I'm pretty sure. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I want it to be in the national hockey league. I want it to be uh, with a you know behind an NHL bench, uh, if it isn't, then I'm going to coach. Um, 
I still feel great. I, I obviously, uh, you know, health yeah. is good and all that good stuff. Uh, I'm just looking forward to uh, getting that opportunity. Yeah, let's let's just expand on that a little bit, Dean. Uh, Dean Evison joining us on the Rain Dregs Hockey Podcast because DJ Smith, you know, he jumped into the situation with the Los Angeles Kings with an old friend in in Jim Hiller. Is that very much a, a personal decision that you have to make? I mean, you've got the NHL head coaching spirit experience, so so does DJ. He could have waited until the off season to see if a, a head coaching position opens up and maybe it will for him, maybe it will for you, but is that a very personal thing to jump right back in as an assistant, as opposed to making a tough call to wait and see if something else materializes? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I've had different people say, just wait, you can pick your spot, this, and that. And, and everybody's like, well, if, if, if you could go somewhere, where would you go? And all those type of questions, it's like, well, you have to make that decision when it presents itself, right? I mean, I, and I'm sure with DJ that, you know, there was a good situation. I'm sure he's comfortable with it, right? Uh, I'd have to make that call, you know, uh, as it came or, or if it mm. did come. And, and like you said, like, do I, do I want to go back to the American Hockey League or, or coach somewhere else? No, I want to coach in the National Hockey League. But if there's nothing there, then mm -hmm. yeah, sure. I want to, I want to coach. I want to try to work my way back. Um, Ray and I talked about before the carriage. I, I, I want to win a Stanley Cup. That's mm -hmm. that's my goal. I, I mean, sure. Is the money great? Is it great to work? Uh, you know, be a coach in the National Hockey League? Yeah, of course. But the the goal is is to win a Stanley Cup. I'm still in it. Um, that's what I want to do. When now, what in this time when you go for your next interview, Dino? You're going to have hopefully one or two or three, whatever it is. Do you look at things a little different? Do you look at the the way you would coach differently? Do you look at systems differently? Have you, I'm sure you've been thinking of all of that stuff, but what's changed maybe in you in the last few months? Yeah, no, you, you definitely, uh, and actually Bob Woods obviously got fired with me as well. Um, we sat down right after, um, and then we circled back another week and a half or whatever after that talking about systems, talking about what we maybe should have done. Maybe, maybe, maybe instead of, um, you know, snapping on the guys a couple of times or, or what have you, maybe we should have just stayed the course, um, just, just stayed positive. And then, but you know, you can second guess all that kind of stuff, but yeah, no, sure. you, you start, and then you start talking about systematic stuff. Like what, maybe, maybe we flip up the neutral zone into two, three or, or, Instead of doing the lock as much, let's do track, all that kind of stuff. So, but, and then now that's where you're watching a lot of stuff. And I, I went, I go through this in the playoffs and, and certainly the, the finals uh, of the Stanley Cup. You watch those two teams very closely to see what they're doing in every zone and, and how they're playing the game um, systematically. So, um, yeah, you, you do evaluate. Um, you look in the mirror and you're like, well, maybe you should have did this. Maybe you should have did that. Um, when, and, and now I, I know why when I was in the American hockey, I'm like, why are they recycling coaches all the time? Like, why don't they call up, call up a new guy like, like me in the American <laughs> right. hockey league. Right. And, and then, but you know why, because you can sit back now, you can evaluate. Um, and I truly believe that the guys that do get let go and they do go through that process are better coaches. Hopefully I'm in the same situation. Uh, one of the, want to ask you one, cause I haven't seen him play live, just read lots about Brock Faber and, um, how much, uh, potentially has what a terrific year he's had. You saw him, mm -hmm. uh, obviously this year, like what, uh, what do we need to know about Brock Faber? Boy, you're going to be, uh, impressed. It'll be a treat to watch him, right? Um, <laughs> he is just so calm. Um, Mm. he's uh, first he's an incredible human being like he's just a fantastic person like just team first um his work ethic all that good stuff like he's a captain at minnesota for a reason he'll be a captain eventually in the national hockey league mm. for sure he's that guy but he's just so calm he just does everything with pace he skates really well he shoots the puck he's got an offensive upside He's as good mm. as it gets. Um, he really is. Um, I think he's got more offense to him. Um, I was excited when they uh, um, Spurge got hurt and uh, a couple other guys were out. He, he was playing on the first power play unit. Um, he's got that in him too. 
um, it's a real treat to uh, to have has, had coached him even for that short amount of time. Yeah, he certainly um, huh. now with Bedard out, he's starting to get more more pub around him a little bit, and it it seems like there's a real momentum to him. Yeah, yeah, and and he not only. Obviously, he's a very good defensive guy, and everybody's like, "Well, he's playing with Brodeen, and and maybe that's why Brodes gets hurt." And he still continued to do what he does. His mm-hmm. sticks real good. His positioning is real good. He's very. The other thing is, he's, he's extremely accountable. Like he's extremely mm-hmm. accountable. Like he, he makes a mistake, he knows right away. But but he has the attitude that he doesn't dwell on it. He just gets back out there and and uh, and does the right thing. So, um, but yeah, I I think he should be in that conversation for sure. I would uh, I would be pissed off if I didn't ask you about your golf game. I know you, <laughs> you know I, I would. Uh, you you've been better than me for thirty years, which bugs me to no end. What what's your cap at right now? Are you one well, two? Yeah, two. It's like a one eight or something like that. Um, after Phoenix, um, actually, it, it was cold in Phoenix. Yeah, you know, don't feel sorry for me. I played yeah. we played thirty six hours every day, but it was cool. But um, you know what? I, I obviously when you text me yesterday, I, you know your memories go back to when you and I played a lot of golf together, a lot of tennis together. We did a lot of crap together. So, um, but yeah, I'd, I'd love to uh, um, take your money again someday. Oh, I just I so I was just out in Arizona, and you know, so you know when you hit it into the wash, into the rocks there, and you got to wedge it out of there. My wedges look like I dragged them behind yeah. it behind the car so i was looking at my wedge and i had it upside down and chuck kobasu walked by and he just took one look and he goes you can buff that out and he just yeah. kept on <laughs> there's no <laughs> chance i can fix these things well you know what that's funny because i said to my son he was happened to be there in phoenix on a business trip so he played with us um and anyway i said to him after the round i said do you want my wedges he looked and he goes no mine are way better than yours <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I want to get new wedges. I'll give you my old. He's like, no, no, yeah. I'll keep my own. So, um, but yeah, I probably got to upgrade mine too with a couple of little cuts in. It. Yeah, I uh, I didn't keep it on the green stuff. That's that's for sure. It's nice uh, to be there though. Nice to oh, be there so much. Yeah, it's such a great game, and uh, you know, just to uh, to walk and uh, you know, it's it, it's a passion, obviously, as you know, for both of us. So Dino. what do you got? What's the, sorry? Just gonna last one yeah. was what's what's the next little bit for you, Dino? Like, what are you what are you gonna do in the next say four, five, six yeah. weeks? Yeah, just um, I, like I said, I just got settled back here in Montreal. Um, my my wife and I have a little condo um, right downtown here. Um, just gonna just gonna settle in here for a little bit. My wife's a flight attendant, so I'm going to jump on a couple of flights with her. She's going to <laughs> Milan next week. So um, oh, nice. I, 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 I pop on a flight with her as long as the loads are good. And I go over and we'll spend a couple of days. She gets like three-day uh, pairings or what have you. So I'll do that. But then, again, I, I'm just going to travel see my kids. Um, nice. I've got a, mm-hmm. I got one in Victoria, one in Lethbridge, and one in Winnipeg. My mom's in Brandon, Manitoba. So I'm going to get an opportunity to see him. I got a couple of grand, uh, grand babies, two grand, uh, sons. Um, so that's amazing. So awesome. yeah, I'm just going to take that time. And, um, as I said, I'm going to prepare, right. I, uh, yeah. I'm going to get prepared. The interview process is a little bit different. I've interviewed a couple of times, um, uh, for NHL jobs. Um, this one I think is going to be a little bit different because I've got a built up kind of resume yeah. already that people can see. Mm. So I don't got to, I don't got to put in the right. paper that, my, my records, this or whatever, people can go look at that. Um, but I am going to put a little package together video wise and paper wise nice. that, uh, that if I get that interview, uh, I'm prepared. Okay. Well, we'll let you go with this Dean. I mean, earlier in the interview, you talked about, um, you know, watching the Stanley cup final teams, right? Because it's, it's a league of stealing, you know, you might as well see what's working and see yeah, if you can yeah. incorporate that. So as you watch, I mean, we can look at the standings and we can see Vancouver at the top of the West and we can see the Bruins and what's going on in the East. As you watch, who do you see as the, the, the top teams, top team in the West and the top team in the East right now? Boy, um, you know what? We <laughs> Dallas actually, you know, we, I, we hadn't played Vegas yet, so I can't, I can't uh, yeah. speak to that. Um, but Dallas was absolutely fantastic. The games that we played <laughs> against them, obviously Colorado is Colorado, but um, uh, you know Dallas has got a lot of uh, 
a lot of uh, good things going on there. Obviously, they beat us in the playoffs last year. We've seen it firsthand with their veteran people and um, young people as well. So um, I think they're uh, they're extremely elite. I haven't watched a lot, obviously, of uh, of uh, the East as as mm-hmm. much. Um, uh, so I'll, uh, I'll I'll just leave it at Dallas for now. Um, you know, I think they've got a good thing going on. No question. All right, Dino. Well, thanks for doing this. Uh, Continue having fun. And there's no doubt that uh, you'll be back in the National Hockey League in the very near future. Thanks, Dregs. I really appreciate it, Ray. All the best, Dean. Thanks. Good to see you, buddy. Look look forward to seeing you at some point. Maybe... Maybe you could slip off the the Masters there. We'll play a little bit around there. Maybe East Lake or something. <laughs> oh, I th- I think I could. God, I think I'm gonna look at my schedule right now. I'd love to get that. That would be sound so good. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. All right, boys, take care. Take care. Thanks, Dino. All right, there's Dean Evison on the Rain Dregs Hockey Podcast. Um, second visit for Dino in the history of Rain Dregs. This is season five. And I, I think he joined us, did he not, Ray, in season one? And there were some great stories, which we didn't get into. It didn't feel like this interview was was mm-hmm. right to revisit some of those old stories. <laughs> they're, they're absolute classics. But I'm just thinking of the technology. We could actually see him in in this interview, where back in the day, in season one, I think it was, you remember? I mean, Jeff Rogers was sitting in his at, at his kitchen table on the farm in Spy Hill, Saskatchewan, right. with the phone kind of sideways or whatever it was. So it feels good we've come a long way, and yep. it's always refreshing to talk to Dean Evison because of his outlook and uh, just how much he enjoys life and has a passion for the for the sport and for coaching. Yeah, I I was really interested in how you know that that first 10 days or whatever of a of a coach's life is when they are when they are let go and you're kind of lost a little bit and you know he said he watched you know watched some of the wild games and then you start looking around the league a little bit and then like pretty soon you realize like you know you're not getting a call in five days or 10 days or two weeks right and so he's had time to go visit his kids and grandkids and his mom and back in Brandon. And so he's taking the time and at the same time, he's, he does sound pretty, pretty eager, yeah. doesn't he? He'd like, he does. He'd like, he'd, he'd like to get back at it for sure. Right. And as he, he acknowledged again, this is, I, and I only share this because it's, it's an acknowledgement of the good people in the sport that have to make brutal decisions. Right. So I sent Billy Guerin a text after we had, had recorded to just say, hey, Dino was on the podcast, um, just did the interview. What a great guy, all of this stuff. Garen responded not long ago and said, he's the best. I love that guy, right? I mean, there's two guys who probably call each other lifelong friends, even though the general manager had to make an incredibly hard decision in firing a friend firing his head coach just for the betterment of, of trying to improve his franchise and win hockey games. So, yeah, it's um, there's nothing warm and fuzzy about the business in that ah, regard. If it no. it's, it's going great. It's going great. It's not, Oh, we gotta, yeah. we gotta figure it out. Yeah. All right. We, uh, We've got a few days ahead of us here to just, uh, well, at least I do, recharge. Super Bowl weekend. Super Bowl weekend. You're in Connecticut, as we talked about earlier. So yeah, what's but the I'll, weekend looking I'm, like uh, for you? Yeah, I've got, uh, so I get studio here Thursday night. Uh, Saturday afternoon, I'm in Boston uh, for Washington. Uh, Sunday morning, I'm on a 6 a.m. flight back home, and I'll get there Perfect. about 12. Super Bowl's at 3.30. Yeah. Um, the, uh, I, I, I'm assuming we're having people over. I'm a little out of the planning <laughs> thing. Um, there will be, uh, I can guarantee you, there'll be some Chiefs uh, supporters. Um, you know, Cammy's, uh, Cammy's all in on the Chiefs, right? Oh, so uh, yeah. So we're, um, Although I like the Chiefs, I got to be honest with you. So I do I. So do I. I love so watching that. Mahomes play. I think he's just amazing. And so, um, yeah, so watch the Super Bowl, have some friends over. And um, you got to be doing something with that 
cooker thingamajiggy. Yours, Schmoker, the pit boss. Um, no, in fact, I'm, I'm, this is the annual trek. Well, I'll probably do it three times a year to a buddy's cottage, the Doyle oh, Cottage in Muskoka, right? So last it, year you were a train wreck when you uh, came back. It's, it, I, I'm just pushing 56 years of age. I just, I can't recover as quickly as I used to. And it's not like we're acting like teenagers, right? I mean, yeah, you know, you have some beverages, you eat like a swine, which is probably the most damaging. That's probably the, the problem weekend. right yeah. there. Yeah. Anyway, looking forward to it. Uh, so you're saying Kansas City. I'm saying Kansas City purely because of Mahomes versus Brock Purdy. Um, but I'm 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 hesitating because we we bet heavily over the course of the weekend on everything, right? It doesn't matter what we're doing; we're betting on it. That's that's part of Super Bowl weekend. So I'm. I Did you bet on the coin flip? That's a little. Yeah, of course, everything. Yeah. yeah, I like to know whether I'm up or down before the game starts. Yeah, they they we used to bet on the first cheerleaders shown. You know, in this case, is it Kansas City or is it, we don't do that anymore because I don't know if you noticed, they don't show the cheerleaders a whole bunch mm. in the NFL, anymore, which is fine. I blue, or, blue or orange Gatorade, you got to bet on that. Yeah, at the end when they first finish. coach shown, like all of the all of the stuff, right? So, all right, buddy. Um, well, enjoy the weekend and um, hope everybody uh, has a great, great end of their week and enjoy Super Bowl weekend. Agreed. And thank you to our sponsors, Ray, who continue to support Ray and Dregs. Our title sponsor, Canadian Club Whiskey, and as always, Tim Hortons. And thank you for sharing, for listening, for rating, and just as importantly, for following us on the Ray and Dregs YouTube channel. Until next time, have a fun but safe Super Bowl weekend, everybody. Mm-hmm.